best way to get better at focusing is to use the mechanisms of focus that you were born with. And the key principle here is that mental focus follows visual focus. Acetylcholine acts as a spotlight, but epinephrine for alertness, acetylcholine spotlighting these inputs, those two things alone are not enough to get plasticity. There needs to be this third component. And the third component is acetylcholine released from an area of the forebrain called nucleus basalis. If you really want to get technical, it's called nucleus basalis of minert. For any of you that are budding physicians or going to medical school, you should know that. If you have acetylcholine released from the brainstem, acetylcholine released from nucleus basalis and epinephrine, you can change your brain. And I can say that with confidence because Merzenich and Reconzone, as well as other members of the uh, Merzenich lab, Michael Kilgard and others, did these incredible experiments where they stimulated the release of acetylcholine from nucleus basalis, either with an electrode or with some other methods that we'll talk about. And what they found was when you stimulate these three brain regions, locus ceruleus, the brainstem source of acetylcholine, and then the basal forebrain source of acetylcholine, when you have those three things, whatever you happen to be listening to, doing, or paying attention to, immediately in one trial takes over the representation of a particular area of the brain, you essentially get rapid, massive learning in one shot. And this has been shown again and again and again in a variety of papers, also by a guy named Norm Weinberger from UC Irvine. And it is now considered a fundamental principle of how the nervous system works. So while Hubel and Weasel talked about critical periods and developmental plasticity, it's very clear from the work of Merzenich and Weinberg and others that if you get these three things, if you can access these three things of epinephrine, acetylcholine from these two sources, not only will the nervous system change, it has to change. It absolutely will change. And that is the most important thing for people to understand if they want to change their brain. You cannot just passively experience things. Is that the best way to get better at focusing is to use the mechanisms of focus that you were born with. And the key principle here is that mental focus follows visual focus. Closing the eyes is one of the best ways to create a cone of auditory attention. And this is what low vision or no vision folks do. They have tremendous capacity to focus their attention in particular locations. We have these cones of attention that we can devote. And for most people, vision is the primary way to train up this focus ability in these cones of attention. So you absolutely have to focus on the thing that you're trying to learn. And you will feel some agitation because of the epinephrine in your system. If you're feeling agitation, and it's challenging to focus and you're feeling like you're not doing it right, chances are you're doing it right. And you can practice this ability to stare for long periods of time without blinking. I know it's a little eerie for people to watch, but if your goal is to learn how to control that visual window for sake of controlling your focus, it can be an immensely powerful portal into these mechanisms of plasticity because we know it engages things like nucleus basalis and these other brainstem mechanisms. Think carefully about how often you're focusing on something and how good you are or poor you are at focusing on something that's challenging. So once you get this epinephrine, this alertness, you get the acetylcholine released and you can focus your attention. Then the question is for how long? And in an earlier podcast, I talked about these ultradian cycles that last about 90 minutes. The typical learning bout should be about 90 minutes. I think that learning bout will no doubt include five to 10 minutes of warm up period. I think everyone should give themselves permission to not be fully focused in the early part of that bout, but that in the middle of that bout for the middle hour or so, you should be able to maintain focus for about an hour or so. So that for me means eliminating distractions. That means turning off the Wi-Fi. I put my phone in the other room. If I find myself reflexively getting up to get the phone, I will take the phone and lock it in the car outside. If I find myself going to get it anyway, I am guilty of um, giving away the phone um, for a period of time or even things more dramatic. I've uh, thrown it up on my roof before, so I can't get to it till the end of the day. That thing is pretty compelling and we come up with all sorts of reasons why we need to be in contact with it. But I encourage you to try experiencing what it is 
to be completely immersed in an activity where you feel the agitation that your attention is drifting, but you continually bring it back. And that's an important point, which is that attention drifts, but we have to re-anchor it. We have to keep grabbing it back. And the way to do that, if you're sighted, is with your eyes. That as your attention drifts and you look away, you want to try and literally maintain visual focus on the thing that you're trying to learn. Feel free to blink, of course, but you can greatly increase your powers of focus and the rates of learning which is anchored in all the work of Merzenich, Hubel, Weasel, and others. Now, that's the trigger for plasticity. But the real secret is that neuroplasticity doesn't occur during wakefulness. It occurs during sleep. We now know that if you focus very hard on something for about 90 minutes or so, maybe you even do several bouts of that per day, if you can do that. Some people can, some people can only do one focus bout of learning. That night and the following nights while you sleep, the neural circuits that were highlighted, if you will, with acetylcholine transmission will strengthen and other ones will be lost, which is wonderful because that's the essence of plasticity. And what it means is that when you eventually wake up a couple days or a week later, you will have acquired the knowledge forever unless you go through some process to actively unlearn it. And we will talk about unlearning at a, in a later episode. So mastering sleep is key in order to reinforce the learning that occurs. But let's say you get a really poor night of sleep after a bout of learning. Chances are, if you sleep the next night or the following night, that learning will occur. There's a stamp in the brain where this acetylcholine was released. It actually marks those synapses neurochemically and metabolically so that those are synapses are more biased to change. Now, if you don't ever get that deep sleep, then you probably won't get those changes. There's also a way in which you can bypass the need for deep sleep, at least partially by engaging in what I call non-sleep deep rest, these NSDR protocols. But I just want to discuss the science of this. There was a paper that was published in Cell Reports last year that shows that if people did, it was a spatial memory task, actually quite difficult one where they had to remember the sequence of lights lighting up. And if there are just two or three lights in a particular sequence, it's easy. But as you get up to 15 or 16 lights and, and think numbers in the sequence, it actually gets quite challenging. If immediately after, and it was immediately after the learning, the actual performance of this task, people took a 20 minute non-sleep deep rest protocol or took a, a shallow nap, so lying down, feet slightly elevated perhaps, just closing their eyes, no sensory input, the rates of learning were significantly higher for that information than were that to just had a good night's sleep the following night. So you can actually accelerate learning with these NSDR protocols or with brief naps, 90 minutes or less. So the key to plasticity in childhood is to be a child. The key to plasticity in adulthood is to engage alertness, engage focus, and then to engage non-sleep deep rest and deep sleep while you're in your typical bout of sleep. Thanks so much for your time and attention. And as always, thank you for your interest in science.